Okay, I think we're up and live and we'll let some people kind of hop on the live stream and I'll do a quick little introduction to start. So hello everyone and welcome to our live stream at Akron Soul Train. Today I am joined by Akron Soul Train artist in residence David Maynard to explore his show State of Grace. So the show has ended at the gallery. So if you didn't get a chance to see in person, this is gonna be your next best thing. And if you did get a chance to see in person, but you had some questions that you wanted to ask the artist, now is your chance. A quick thank you to our sponsors, the GAR Foundation, the Akron Community Foundation, Ohio Arts Council, the Lehner Family Foundation, the Brennan Family Foundation, the Knight Foundation, and the Corbin Foundation. So for those viewing live, please feel free to ask questions. If you're viewing this after the live stream, ask questions too, we can get to them. Um, and please comment below how you like this type of programming so that we can continue to bring you all really awesome programs versus both virtual and in person. Okay, so I'm just gonna switch this camera around and we're gonna get started with David. Yeah. Okay, cool. Um, I'm going to kind of do a walkthrough. We may not address every piece, um, but I'll kind of point to some pieces that um, that really kind of helped build the show. Um, mm -hmm. This is the first one. This is really the first piece that kind of laid the groundwork for every piece that went into this show. Um, I like to work with many different mediums um, although primarily a printmaker uh, if I do paint the aesthetic that I'd like to come off with is a printed look or something that could be reprodu reproduced and printed easily um, that would be the reason for some of the color choices uh, not a lot of blending more color blocking and the layers that um, come from that um, so yeah this is really the first one that kind of got the ball rolling and the ideas kind of flowing yeah. through that um, I created a couple more pieces similar in style um, just kind of exploring that look and then through that breaking it down a little bit um, and seeing where it would take me from there uh, so I'll show a couple more that are like this and then the evolution, and then leading to the work that created the show, State of Grace. So, um, this is another one, very, very similar to that one. Same type of color blocking, um, same type of graphic imagery. Um, you have the halftone dots in there, which is yeah, very yeah, much a screen yeah. print screen aesthetic. Print, comic book, <laughs> yeah. newspaper. Um, this one, I started to try and get a little bit of texture to come through with the underpainting. Um, generally in a lot of my work and a lot of other artists' work, sometimes you'll paint over older paintings or do an underpainting specifically for it. Um, so that's what was done here. Um, and then, you know, sanding parts away, just creating that little texture, a little bit of extra depth. Um, and you'll see that in this painting here too. Um, super, super strong graphically. Uh, and again, with creating more of the texture here, which I really, really do enjoy um, and plan to kind of incorporate in some upcoming work. And then from there, I kind of broke everything down a little bit. Um, still wanted to keep the print look aesthetic we kind of dive a little further into it which led to this piece right here um, still very graphic um, the colors are a little bit more uh, loose they're not as strongly stamped in there uh, and rather than blocking out the figure 
I kind of just outlined the main features of it. Uh, again, just to give it a, a bit more of an abstract look, but yeah. you know, still figurative, still keeping it all together, which is important for printmaking in general, and that's kind of where I like to keep it. Um, so with that being said, all of these works that were shown uh, with the color, you know, keeping it simple, blocking it out, uh, having a printed aesthetic, ushered in the new work that I had displayed here at Acton Soul Train. Um, so before we get into that, um, like I said, um, I think I said, uh, I work with different mediums, um, painting, printing, uh, sculpture. Um, I don't really like to, you know, I'm, I just consider myself an artist. I just create, I like to make things. I would hate to have an idea and not be able to execute it simply because it's not my style. Um, I only work with, you know, painting or I, I strictly say with sculpture. I want to create, I have to create. If I don't, I get really anxious, really depressed, so I need to do that. Um, so that's what kind of, I'll show you a sculpture. These are, uh, together, are called Firing Squad. Um, I have sculpted traditionally with clay, epoxy putty. Um, these, however, were sculpted digitally and then uh, 3D printed, uh, cleaned up, painted. Uh, I don't really like to sculpt anymore with traditional clays or putties or anything like that. I don't like the mess. Um, so, but this piece is really cool. I really, I'm a big fan of the art toy culture um, and then the artists that make them. Uh, so that's basically kind of what went on here. I guess there is, you know, could be a story behind it. There really is. I don't like to get too deep. I don't like to think that way, um, even though there is. I think that way when I'm making everything. When I'm making everything, that's when I'm alone. I'm with the work, and I can get what it's giving me and vice versa. Um, the firing squad, the bullets, blindfolded, smoking their cigarette, about to be executed being blindfolded, the bullets aimlessly flying at whoever, wherever. I mean, it says a lot about everything that's going on. I have a really bad habit of creating work that deals with guns, firearms, death, whatever, and it just, it just, it just keeps happening. It's kind of a bummer uh, because I, I appreciate the way it looks outside of you know, the grim reality of what's really going on. Yeah. Um, let's see. Uh, we'll talk about this piece right here. Uh, this is one of my favorites. Um, it's keeping with the small, limited color palette. Um, it's a painting that could easily be reproduced via print work. Uh, however, this is to be shown where um, the background starts to become just as important as the main image itself by having the repeated imagery. Uh, and I'll point that out in some other works that I have. Um, the same way I broke down the earlier pieces to make the surfer where I, I kind of broke down some of its shapes and whatnot, I did the same thing with this piece here. Um, it's the same thing as the birds, just altered uh, to make the background just as important as the birds themselves. Uh, the piece is called Mermation, and for anyone that doesn't really know what that is, anyone that's ever seen giant flocks of birds moving and creating wild patterns, it's basically that. Um, yeah, just something that I, I thought really lended itself to breaking it down from its original form, making it more abstract, and creating that sort of look. Um, it's interesting because your palette is getting more limited, but the colors are maybe a little bit more bold or strong yeah, yeah. than I, the beginning. I, I definitely wanted them to be a little bit more electric, especially with just being essentially two colors, you know, you, the cream background or whatever could be a third. 
Um, but it, I do, it didn't really call for anything else. Uh, mm. Keeping it simple kind of helps drag that background a little forward, uh, makes it more meditative, I guess. Um, yeah. I know a lot of artists, after they make their work, they don't really like to look at it or whatnot. Mm. I kind of obsess over it. Uh, I've definitely been known to just sit in front of it for an hour or more, um, but it really kind of helps me um, explore it even more, um, what it really means, you know, because you're working with it, you can kind of get in touch with it and you can kind of pull from ideas and whatnot, but you really have to focus on creating the work. So when it's done, I think it's really important to sit, reflect with it, and kind of see where it's going to take you, you know, further. So did the, um, the flock come before Mermation? Yeah, flock yeah. came before Mermation. Um, it couldn't have happened any other way um, because I had this image. I wanted to break it down a little bit more so that led to the more abstract version. Thing. Yeah. You know, and it, it would be cool doing it larger Honestly, it was just kind of pain in the butt, so <laughs> that sucks. That's fair. Um, now we'll talk about these pieces, which kind of, I guess, would fall more into the theme of the show, State of Grace. Um, whether I like it or not, a lot of my work is influenced, and you can see the images of religious iconography. Um, it's the oldest icons that have been painted time and time again. It's some of my favorites. It's extremely powerful. Um, and then State of Grace, to me, is just something I feel that's really important. I think we need to give ourselves a bit more grace. We need to give others a bit more grace. Uh, now more than ever, the world sucks, uh, so we need it. Uh, and I could go on and on about that, but this is kind of where this is from. Uh, again, similar to the flock being kind of a meditative piece, these are pretty similar, especially with the limited color palette. Again, being a painting, um, still could be easily reproduced uh, with a print. Um, using the kind of electric blue against the red, gives it a kind of psychedelic look uh, that would be, you know, again, very easy to just sit by yourself, stare at it, get lost in it. Um, yeah, that blue kind of has to be like really specific yeah. for it not to get, I don't know, patriotic in a way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and that, was, that was a choice. If both the blue and the red are very specific paints that I had, you know, that I had to order that I knew exactly I've, I've worked with them before, so I knew how they would work together without them being, you know, patriotic. You know, just like these pieces right here, these kind of evolved differently. They were kind of going to uh, be like a Tibetan prayer flags where they were all going to be linked together. I decided to kind of separate them. Um, the title Red, White, and Dead just kind of went with them where <laughs> it would be patriotic. Uh, and it, but it just, the, the, the title, you know, like a lot of artists, I think um, we're pretty uh, introverted and whatnot, so we can get a little bit dramatic with our titles. <laughs> I definitely like to do that. But, you know, it just happened that there was a lot of shit going on with the news. You know, the same thing that's really been going on. Um, this was an image that I had repeated into a painting, uh, so I just used it for the so. Yeah. yeah. Do you like the fact there's a few kind of things that are re like repetitive, mm -hmm. the re I think, repetitions? I think, uh, I think repetitive imagery is calming. Uh, I think people can be receptive to it. Um, it's not as intimidating as just one image, uh, because I think we see repeated imageries everywhere, uh, architecture, different forms of art, um, music, repetitive, you know. Um, so I, I like to repeat things, 
uh, because it can create something other than itself, yeah. um, which is what we'll see right here with um, these screen prints from the Jesus piece there. Together, you know, by themselves. Nice little cross image, but the background becomes really apparent, really pops through, especially with the limited color palette of the red and the darker red. Um, when I make something like this, I see it like 360 degrees large all around me. So I'm just trying to capture that little bit, you know, to where you can sit back, look at it, and imagine it even larger, um, deeper. Um, and, and again, just just think about it. Uh, I, I I don't find my, I don't believe I'm a very religious person, but I do turn to that imagery a lot. Um, you see a lot of art being created now that they'll take modern icons and make work based on that uh, via like a lot of different cartoon characters and stuff like that. I, I don't really like that. I think it's kind of a too, it's a little, it's just not for me. Um, you know, Jesus, Mary, a lot of others have been printed or painted forever. So I'm kind of going to stick with that. I actually have started working on ideas for new work that dives a little deeper into that imagery. I didn't yeah. plan on it. It's just where it's taking me. Yeah. So I have no choice. But yeah. To I mean, with that. they're they're icons for a reason yeah. and been used for for centuries mm -hmm. to change people's minds, dictate yeah. their life. Yeah, because I mean, it, it, it's it's clear to anyone that like. For what you know, Jesus was not white. I, I like I'm duh. Given the part of the world where he would have been from, he, he wouldn't have been a white person at all. Um, but this is the image we've been given, uh, and this is the image that's been repeated um, for a, a myriad of reasons. But yeah, I, I I just think like a lot of people, you you're born into religion and it stays with you. Uh, it's really hard to get away from um, like these paintings for instance back here uh, they kind of reflect more of like my, my fear of hell I guess <laughs> you know again when you're born into yeah. it even if you're not strictly religious it affects you and these pieces are just that um, they're a bit scarier you know the scarier side of religion uh, yeah so um yeah. yeah and it almost like they at one point they stopped becoming even like religious symbols they're too iconic mm -hmm. in a way yeah. yeah these ones with the distortions definitely have that kind of like corrupt yeah i like iconography yeah like, like this one again <laughs> going with more of a, a dramatic title, Prayer at the Hour of Death. Um, super dramatic. <laughs> but with, again, kind of a repeated image split, you, you have, you can look at it differently where you have the one side locked off and it's a bit more what you would see from a typical religious icon. It, it's very... Um, it just seems very, I can't, I can't really think of the words, um, but you, how they would be depicted normally. Yeah. It was very, it would be softer, more sullen, um, and then you would have, you know, this side where you would kind of have that Old Testament type feel look to it. Um, Basically, you know, your prayers being answered whether you want to or not. Kind of like uh, the genie in a lamp. You know, you make yeah. your wish, but it's not always what it could directly be. Mm-hmm. 
And I just, I love the, the glow yeah, that yeah. that yellow creates. It definitely took on like a gnarly glow. I was pretty stoked on. Um, and again, with the creating the texture around it would be, again, something easy to translate to a print. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, I guess we'll briefly talk about these pieces. These mm. pieces were just kind of an extension of the show's title, State of Grace, uh, inspired by uh, missionaries going throughout Asia. Uh, I was watching a documentary, not having to do with anything, but there was a lot of like old religious posters on you know little shanty houses throughout the the slums there that they have, um, and it just made me think about you know missionaries. Although thinking they were doing the right thing, going over to different countries and converting people to Christianity, what have you, um, but essentially taking away everything that those people already had, you know, they already had religion, they already had whatever gods they believed in. Um, so just the caption with you are a soul, you know, that you were still there no matter what happened, no matter you know, them coming over and trying to convert, anything like that. Uh, and again, very graphic, um, could easily be made you know, with a screen print or any other printed type material. Um, so I guess we'll talk about one of the pieces that a lot of people have been talking about. Uh, it's one of my favorites. It's one I've been wanting to do for a long time. It really fit within the theme of the show. It fit in perfectly here at the gallery because it had its own room, which was really cool. And if you came to the opening, because you know, we did have music going throughout the whole thing, lots of people here. But when you entered this room, it got really quiet and offered itself uh, really well with the piece. So check that out. Um, I guess you, I guess you would call this a sculpture. Um, it's my electric chair with uh, Louis Vuitton accents, accessories, gold corner pieces. And I've had a lot of people talk to me about this piece um, with different thoughts. Again, it kind of goes into the title of the show of State of Grace, having grace, giving grace to others. And, hoping that you get it in return. Um, but like the bullets, it kind of reflects how I feel. We, at least in this country, don't respect human life. Um, you know, aside from being born, dying is, you know, the only other, you know, that's a, those are the two significant life events being born and dying. And I just don't feel that we appreciate life the way we should. We're inundated with horrible videos of violence and death. Uh, anytime you see videos of people you know, fighting or anything, you see five times as many people around them just filming it. Um, so this piece speaks to a lot of that. It, you know, it can speak to, you know, what do we like more, you know, luxury, possessions, um, but yeah, it, 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 it's, it's a heavy piece, it's one of my favorites. Yeah, and just to note, my phone is making it a little bit brighter in here, it's trying to do some white balance, oh, yeah, it's yeah. a little bit mm, warmer, more mysterious in person. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it has, a, it has a heavy feeling when you walk into it. Um, you know, I, I've worked with darker themes um, most of my life, so I kind of, you know, like the, uh, I've gotten used to it, and um, I, I don't, when people haven't done that, their reactions are a little bit stronger 
to it, you know, because I, I fit, you know, I just don't realize that, you know, not everyone thinks like that. Um, but yeah, yeah, it, it, it's one of my favorite pieces. Yeah, it's it's nice that we had this room for it because it's it, very striking. Even just walking by and catching a glimpse of it. Yeah, it's scary. Yeah, it, you know, um, this space worked perfectly for it. any bigger, and it would have gotten lost. Any smaller, it would have been cramped. This is the perfect, perfect room yeah. for this piece. Yeah, so it's exciting that you can make that happen. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I'll still make it. I was very surprised I was able to actually make it and make it work. So. Yeah. Yeah. And then like the, just the juxtaposition between the bright outside, I'm going to try to get a cool shot and the kind of darkness interior. Mm -hmm. It's really, really interesting to see. Okay. So if anyone has any questions, now would be a great time. I'm going to kind of go through and see some of my questions. Um, what do you think? So I know that you're coming from printmaking and you're keeping printmaking in mind. Do you think that having like the singular painting gives like a piece more presence or how do you feel about that difference or your choices on making something a painting versus a print? Uh, I think it just kind of falls like depending on honestly like my mood maybe the a lot of time that i have to make a piece i try mm -hmm. to be very efficient uh because like most people we don't really have a lot of time so everything has to be planned mm -hmm. you know uh ahead of time um i do have some painting traditional paintings planned uh, because that's where like i, I feel like a lot of artists that's where you start you start painting uh, so I just want to kind of come back to that a little bit just to show that you know, I do that as well um, As far as like multiples, I just think it's a good way that people can get a piece um, It's very accessible. It's yeah. way more accessible uh, Generally prints tend to be a little bit less pricey So it's a little less intimidating that way too yeah. Um, yeah. yeah, it's it's interesting. You're not the first kind of printmaker going into painting that I've known that does the color separation in painting the mm -hmm. same way they would in print. It kind yeah. of, I think, because I'm I would be coming from printmaking first, so it would make painting seem less scary yeah, to it's start. A bit less daunting, <laughs> yeah, you know, if you kind of break down whatever you're painting into a limited palette. Um, it's cheaper to do that too, you're not yeah. buying like a bunch of paints. Uh, but yeah, I, I think that's just kind of like if, if you have experience printing, um, that's kind of how your brain is already working. It's, it's if you if you get an image to print, mm -hmm. you're already working out how to break it down. So I just like that aesthetic to carry into the paintings too. So yeah. the ones I do have coming up are more traditional paintings. Um, but yeah. No, and it's um, one thing that I was kind of noting throughout the whole exhibit, I'll kind of do a back pedal. Your colors get more limited, mm -hmm. but just more vibrant as well. So there's a really interesting color story happening throughout the whole gallery mm -hmm. that the viewer gets to walk through. Yeah, the, the ones that I started off that kind of set the tone for everything, uh, they have your, your basic colors that you use. Um, they may be a little hewed out differently, you know, but your red, your cyan, your yellows, you know, and then your know, blacks on top of it yeah. um, are the basis of like most modern printmaking. Um, and then after I kind of went with that for a while, I still really enjoy those colors that I chose. Um, I just needed to move on to work on other things. Yeah. Still wanted to keep everything colorful. Um, some of my earlier work didn't really have a lot of color, um, and I think a lot of the brightness was kind of just, uh, being influenced by a lot of other work that's being created, uh, created by similar artists that I know, you know, just kind of all working yeah. with some hyper color. 
Yeah. And so do you have anything on the horizon? Talking about some more traditional paintings. Do you have any shows, prints, um, stuff coming up? There's a couple group shows. Uh, I'm not going to speak on right now just because I've got to get uh, some paperwork to <laughs> you know, that sort of thing. Uh, as far as any larger shows, I'm kind of going to take a break throughout the summer just to work on those ideas. Yeah, uh, yeah. Because after this show was done, it really kind of took a lot out of me, um, and yeah. I'm still kind of feeling it. It's a lot um, to put on a show this big. <laughs> yeah. So even though I will be taking some time off from executing, um, I'm never taking time off from planning. So I'm going to be planning a lot, um, and then we'll just kind of see where it goes from there. So. Yeah. Well, thank you so much. Okay, I'm going to give one more kind of quick overview up here while I do my little um, conclusion. Uh, thank you, David, for giving us this tour of your show, State of Grace. And thank you, everyone, for tuning in. Um, so the gallery will be closed for install next week, but then we will open two new shows, Catherine Moore's The Space Between Landing and Falling and Eva Polzer's Just Girly Things. And that will open Wednesday, May 3rd. And the opening reception will be Friday, May 5th from 5 to 7.30. We hope you can join us. Um, our regular gallery hours will resume that week. Um, and that's Wednesday to Saturday from 11 to 4 p.m. I'm going to switch us around again. So, yeah, thank you. We hope you can join us um, for the next shows. I'm going to... Zoom around and we'll say bye to everybody. Bye. Thank you.